Wednesday evening, November 8th at Seven Mile Casino was fun. Let's just see how I got my luck box so full of chips. First hand was with King Jack offsuit in middle position, an opening of 15 and two callers. The first is a big muscular Italian guy whom I've previously seen at Ocean's Eleven a few times. He plays pretty tight and he knows I don't mess around either. The small blind also calls. The guy that was in seat one wanted me to refer to him on my blog as Fishy after recognizing me. Flop brings three ladies that are experimenting at college. I think I should be continuing to take the pot down, planning on barreling to get middle to low pairs to fold. Perfect hand to do it with, blocking king, queen, and queen, jack. Plus, I can also hit a king or a jack to join the house party. I get the big Italian to call, and we go to a blank turn. Keeping with the plan, I bet again and get another call. River is another blank. Came this far. Think I should still go for it. Even more so since this player knows me and can fold a hand like pocket nines or tens. The third barrel gets rejected, though. I'm blue balled early, add on another 200, and I'm in for 500 now. Pocket jacks in the small blind, and the action in front of me is a raise from a half stack and a three bet from a player that previously three bet ace jack suited in early position to an under the gun raiser. Easy four bet to get it all in. I'm at worst even money against the three better with that range plus, even with no fold equity or bluffs. Uh, original Razor folds, and we do get it all in. Board runs out great with no overcards. I take it down against Ace Queen. After winning a few other standard hands, like Ace King on a flop of Ace King Queen against King Queen, I'm up to a little over $1,100 stack and feeling good. Eight six of clubs in middle position, facing a couple limps. I do the same. It's a good hand to play with both a deep SPR and stack. A player that called down with ace high for a chop raises 13. And after three other players call, I toss in two more red chips as well. Ace, ace, three flop with two clubs. Decently likely somebody has trips and I myself have the flush draw. Call light, bets just 25 and gets two more callers. I do the same. Don't want to raise when I'm getting such a good price and will be in position against two of the players. Turn is exactly what I'm looking for. I hit my flush and the original raiser goes all in for about a pot size bet. Folds all the way to me and I happily call. Hard for him to have a full house or a higher flush. Looks like trip aces, but it's not. King queen of clubs for a higher flush takes it down. A small setback. Pocket eights now, and I open to 15, getting three callers. The flop sure makes life easy. Top boat on a flush draw board. Then a donk lead from the small blind, and standard call by me. Turn is a black three, and another bet from the small blind. Time to raise and get the money all in by the river. He calls, then the flush completes with the five of diamonds. He checks and no idea what he has, but he bought in short stacked and previously limped ace six offsuit from early position, so I don't think he's a particularly strong player. I go for it all, rip it in, then get a long tank from the player with him somewhat staring me down. He goes back and forth, and I can't decide either way what decision he is leaning towards. He eventually called looking right at me, and got very frustrated after I showed my hand, telling me, nice catch. He showed an eight and said he had eight two for a lower full house. If that is the case, pretty amazing he didn't call sooner. Add an $1,800 stack now and loving life at this table. Ace king on the button and raised two limpers to 20. Both blinds call five ways to a flop with already $100 in the middle. Nothing much, and I check back. Turn is another seven, and I face a small bet of 40 from an older gentleman with glasses. Doesn't seem strong, and with the previous three players checking, I don't think any of them will have a queen. I call in position, could be good now, or can still improve with an ace or king. 
River brings a third diamond and a really small bet now of 50. Looks really weak, and I could be good. I just think he's playing pretty face up and will fold a hand like an eight or maybe even a queen to a raise. I also have the king of diamonds and blocks and flushes. I go for the raise, making it 100 more. He folds before I even put the money in the pot. This hand was just to show you that I didn't just pick up monsters and only win giant pots when I had it, with those type of hands being the remainder of the video. You thought I was running good up to this point? Just wait. There is a button straddle on in this hand and an under the gun opening of just double that of 12 from the mean mug and white male. I call with pocket sixes and we go five ways to a flop. Sets are good, this time on a very wet coordinated board. The original razor continues. This is not at all the time to slow play. Plenty of draws and I don't have the board locked up like with the eights full hand. He calls after all the other players fold, going heads up to a jack of diamonds on the turn, completing the flush. Then I hear a powerful all-in and a mean mug and stare directed right at me. He also looked at his cards before he did it, so a lot of tells going on. I'm getting about 2-1 to one odds, having it be a round a pot size bet. If he does have a flush or a flop to straight, I would be about 3-1 to one to hit. Incredibly sure he has numerous other hands. I call. He is defeated and says, really, did you flop it? Only one pair. I really like the sound of that. The river pairs the board with an eight and another full house for me. He flips over ace eight with the ace of diamonds, thinking trips might be good. Not tonight. Another big pot heading into my luck box. Plus, a new high action player sits down that I have played with once before. Pocket queens, and I raise a few limpers to 25, getting the pre-mentioned action player to call, as well as a short stack that actually went all in for 39. Can only call, going heads up for the side pod. Board is 5-3 deuce rainbow, and I get a donk lead of 45. Let's get it in, he calls, with the board running out pretty clean. I was up against 6-5, pair plus gut shot, the all-in player mucks, and I take it all. At a 2.5k stack and change, up a little over $2,000 now. With the run good, still full steam ahead. Pocket queens, and I 3-bet an isolation raise from the same player. We're going heads up, in position. Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. Nothing much to think about with only $57 left in a pot of 150 but why not? Just give me top set and the nuts. He shoves, I call. The crazy Mexican shows pocket nines for second set. Even though we didn't have much left to play with going to the flop, pretty sick. A couple limps, and I limp behind with king four of hearts. Similar situation as with 8-6 earlier. A raise to 17 from a player that has been rather quiet. After a string of calls, I do the same. Not a great spot, but why not? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. I would have taken just flopping a flush. The nut with the ace is just comedic overkill. The razor bets, and after everyone folds to me, time to get it in with not much left. He calls and has pocket queens with a heart, almost drawing dead. The entire table, and even more so that specific player, are all just bewildered at this point about my fortune, about how I win just about every single big pot at the table. Hard to even believe it myself. In the big blind with ace king of hearts this time, a little better than the old king four, a raise of 13 from early position, and two calls. Easy squeeze spot, with all the players being deep stacked, I size it up big to $100. The original raiser quickly calls, and everyone else folds. This is already turning into the most interesting hand of the night, by playing over 400 big blinds effective. The flop is fantastic. Ace-3-2 rainbow. The way the preflop action went, 
I think I almost always have the nuts here. When players limp so often and raise sparingly, you can eliminate many hands from their range. I suspect this player would limp pocket twos and threes, as well as ace two suited or ace three suited. Then even if he did raise them, he would most likely fold preflop anyway. I'm mostly putting him on medium or borderline premium pocket pairs, suited broadways, and big aces. Zero hands in that range, I'm behind. I decided to check, giving him a chance to bluff if he has air, and he is a player that would look to bet with an ace for sure. He does bet, 100, and I call. Leading and trying to get three streets of value from ace-queen would also be a completely credible line, perhaps better. Turn is a seven of spades, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. I go for another check and I face another one half size pot bet of 200. Normally, one would never want to get all in over 400 big blinds with top pair, top kicker. I just really believe I am never behind the way the action went down. So raise, call and check river, or call and lead river. I immediately like the third option, call here and then lead the river, thinking ace-queen might check back, but will make a crying call in the river with no more action. That specific hand might fold to a raise here, thinking it's all going in on the river. I like that better than call and check the river, since I don't see many hands triple barrel bluffing and rule out that option. I went for door number three, though, with a raise. Thinking ace-queen or ace-jack of spades specifically would call here, that this player type would bet on the turn. Not sure about it, I'm really screaming pocket aces, and it's not usually good to be representing a better value hand than you actually have. Call light goes deep into the tank. I feel comfortable calling off a potential raise or going all in myself on a non-spade river. He eventually folds. I told him if he shows, I will show, but he said he didn't care what I had. So it will remain a mystery. Now, I've been playing since round four, and it's midnight, eight hours of pure poker joy. I have a stack of $3,489 and want to squeeze out 11 more to book a profit of 3K. Once I get that, I am planning on leaving. After I fold the small blind, the next hand I win a very small pot on the button and get there. Huge night, and waiting to fold out my free hands and hit the chip cage. The very last orbit, I first win, though, a decent pot with ace-five of spades, flopping a flush draw and rivering the nut flush, raising the river and getting called by a straight. More chuckles from the table about my luck, and then the very next hand after that one, this gem occurs. American Airlines. And open a 15 from a familiar foe, looking to raise and gladly take his short stack. I get cold called, though, by a newly sat down seat one that recognized me from my vlog, and I'm guessing is a thinking player. Looks like he very likely has pocket tens through queens, maybe ace king. The crazy Mexican calls, leaving himself just $20. Flop is low coordinated once again. I go for a bet of 150. He goes all in anyway, and the other player saves his last $20. I call, and he has pocket kings. The turn has a face, but it's a queen. The river has a face, but it's a jack. One more gigantic pot to close my session after I folded my last few free hands. I got up to a $4,207 stack, an 8x5 mountain of red $5 stacks, then two black $100 chips, and seven blue dollar ones. Makes for a profit of $3,707, 